Hey everyone, Case here. Welcome back to Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. It's been a couple weeks. Halloween has now officially passed. We had a cool Halloween side quest that we had to do. I finished that, which was great. But now back on track to what we actually have to do. Previous video, we had to get all the different ingredients, I believe. Was that that video? We had to get a bunch of ingredients to make a love potion, if I recall. And now we have to take that love potion and trade it with Alistair. For the invisibility cloak, and Jay and Andre will be by my side. I'm just curious to see what it looks like. Alright, where's my cloak? I need a screenshot of it too. It's about bloody time. Do you have any idea how long I've been waiting? I'm sorry, Alistair. It took a while to brew the love potion. Uh. But we have it now, and that's all that matters, right? So, where is it? Right here! Look at how they're zooming in kind of close. Oh, look at the kitty cats! How can this place be bad? They say this place is bad! They got kitty cats! <sighs> it looks real, but how can I be sure it's not a fake? Like the last one you sold me, Kim. Mm. Come on, Alistair. Do you really think I played the same trick twice? Yes. I can assure you that it is real, Alistair. I wouldn't risk getting this invisibility cloak. It's too important. Besides, I personally brewed this one with one of the best potioneers at Hogwarts. <sighs> alright, alright. I don't got all day. Let's make our trade. There you go, kid. One invisibility cloak for your love potion, as promised. Thanks for making the trade, Alistair. <sighs> sure, kid. Just don't tell your friends. I can't believe I finally got the invisibility cloak. Where is it exactly? Huh. I'm so jealous. Think of all the things you can do with one. Uh. What are you most excited to use the invisibility cloak for? Making mischief, snooping around, hiding from the world. Well, obviously snooping around, isn't that the whole point of what we're trying to do? And I'm not a making mischief type of person. And I want to get my name out there instead of hiding. Probably snooping around. I could explore forbidden places and eavesdrop without being seen. Huh. Think of all the interesting information you could dig up. Mm. Let me know if that ever includes what Snape does in his off hours. I'm so curious. But before I can do any of that, I need to sneak into the Ministry and get my hands on Rakepig's Dark Artifacts before she can. That's why you need an invisibility cloak? So you could break into the Ministry. Alistair? Were you eavesdropping on us? You were discussing your secret plan right out in the open. Don't blame me for listening in. But honestly, I'm grateful. I needed a laugh. What's so funny? For starters, the idea that a kid who's never used an invisibility cloak could go unnoticed at the Ministry. If you're trying to talk me out of this, it's not gonna work. <sighs> Look kid, I don't care what you do. If you want to get yourself thrown into Azkaban, be my guest. But before you try the impossible, I recommend you get a feel for using it on easier targets. <sighs> like your professors, perhaps. Uh... He has a point. It wouldn't hurt to practice surveilling under an invisibility cloak before tackling the Ministry. And I know the perfect professors to start with. Meet me at the Transfiguration Classroom. It's time to break in your invisibility cloak. You mean I was gonna just jump into that without testing it? What is wrong with me? I'm supposed to practice using my invisibility cloak on Professor Jay, not an empty room. Mm. It won't be empty for long. Every day around this time, McGonagall and Flit will get together. You think I should eavesdrop on their meeting? Mm. Trust me, listening in on their conversation will be a perfect practice for sneaking into the Ministry. 
And if McGonagall just happened to discuss the content of this week's Transfiguration exam, well... You want to learn what questions you're on it, don't you? Mm. Hey, if you're going to practice anyway, you might as well gather the useful information while you're at it, right? Uh... So if the topic of the exam comes up, will you tell me anything you learned about it? Sure, why not? No, that's cheating. Sorry, Jay. Looks like you're going to have to put the old big brain to use. No, Jay, that's cheating. Uh... It's not like I'm smuggling an answer sheet into the test. I still have to study. I'm just being resourceful. It's still an unfair advantage. Sorry, Jay, but you'll just have to study the old-fashioned way. Mm. Eh, it was a try. Uh... McGonagall and Flitwick should be here any minute. Got your invisibility cloak? Yes, and I'm all ready to test out my ability to use my invisibility cloak without getting caught. Mm. Just remember, even though no one will be able to see you with it on, they can still hear you. Uh... Keep quiet and still, and it should be fine. Got it. Uh... I think I hear McGonagall and Flitwick coming. Quickly, put on your invisibility cloak. Well, there's my thumbnail, I guess. How do I look? That's actually a kind of cool one, too. Uh -huh. Let's just say I can see right through you. Mm. Good luck, Casey. Yeah, the first time is always a bit awkward. Oh? <laughs> I look like ridiculous. I look like a ghost. Is there anything I can help you with, Mr. Kim? Mm. No, Professor. I was just leaving. Carry on. Mm. I'm trying to figure out a good screenshot. As I was saying, Phileas, the time of her arrival couldn't be worse. Mm. We have no idea the dangers this may pose. Hmm. You're right, Minerva. Perhaps it would behoove us to further discuss everything Albus told us. Hey, it's working. You know it's me. I'm doing such a good job, aren't I? I suppose we'll simply have to monitor the situation with the dangerous wizard from Mahutakoro. Regarding this exchange program with Castellabruxo, however, are you sure we should not call it off? Oh. With no end to the petrification curse in sight and Patricia Rickpick still on the loose, is Hogwarts really safe? Hmm. You know what I just realized? I think I used to do a voice for this character, but it's been quite a while so I forgot. I'm afraid it's too late for that. The Brazilian students will be arriving imminently. Oh. Besides, we do not want to raise needless internal and suspicion. <clears throat> You're right, Phileas. We will have to manage. Don't see me. Mm. Nope, they didn't see me. KC, are you here? Right here. I just couldn't wait. How did it go? Did McGuggle say anything about the exam? Sorry, Jay. It didn't come up. Mm. Ah, well. It's not like you were going to tell me anything you learned about the exam anyway. But what she and Flitwick did say makes me wonder what I can gather from observing the other professors. Mm. Well, while I was waiting for you, Kettleburn walked by. Mm. He was talking about some meeting with Hagrid in the Care of Magical Creatures classroom. Uh... It sounded serious. Might be able to get some information from spying on them. Thanks for the tip, Jay. Sounds like Hagrid and Kelburn are my next practice targets. Spying? I'm testing. There's a difference. Time to spy. Why is she? Why is she there? Liz, have Hagrid and Kelburn been through here? No, not since Kilburn asked me to watch this colicky unicorn hours ago. Why do you ask? Good, then I've beaten them here. Hmm? Uh, beat who here, Casey? Hagrid and Kettleburn. I got a new invisibility cloak, and I want to practice using it by spying on the meeting. <gasps> you got an invisibility cloak? I've never used one myself because they're typically made from demiguise fur. Hmm. But I've wondered what it feels like to become invisible like a demiguise. Tell me, what does it feel like to use an invisibility cloak? Exhilarating, invasive, silly. I can't feel my character's feelings. 
and emotions, but I'm assuming that it's probably exhilarating. It feels exhilarating to observe things I'm not supposed to be privy to or trying not to get caught. Fascinating. I wonder if that's why demigeysers are always disappearing. Nay! Uh, is your unicorn alright? Judging by her twitching ears, I say she just hears someone coming. That must be Hagrid and Caleburn. Liz, will you keep it a secret that I'm here? Oh. Of course, Casey. Your secret is safe with us. Oh. Now you better put your invisibility cloak on. Oh. Not as brilliant as the demon guys going invisible, but still rather impressive. Oh. There's me. I am like a uh, hunchback of invisibility dam. Should we ask Miss Tuttle to leave? Why did I even say that? No, I wouldn't worry about it. She looks so absorbed in that unicorn that I doubt she'll even notice we're here. Uh. I don't know what to make of this. In all my years of Hogwarts, I've never seen him act this way. Hmm. It is rather peculiar, and that's saying something as I'm rather familiar with the peculiar. Doll. Oh. Perhaps going over everything we've observed will allow us to find some rhyme or reason for this odd behavior. Remember the Halloween episode of Charlie Brown? When Charlie Brown has like that sheet over his head and he's supposed to be like a ghost? That's what it reminds me of, except I'm invisible. So, what do you think? What should we do now? Hmm. Well, I was thinking of taking a nice long bath, then perhaps some light reading. Ah. Uh. I meant, what should we do about the overly aggressive Grindy Louds terrorizing the Black Lake? Oh. Or, I mean, Grindy Lows. Though I reckon that does sound lovely. Oh! Oh, that of course! Why don't we report our findings to Albus? He'll know how best to proceed. Oh. But after that, a nice long bath and some light reading. See you later. Did you hear that, Liz? Hmm? Uh, hear what? You mean, you were really so focused on the unicorn you didn't hear Hagrid and Kelburn talking? There's a sick creature in front of me. You're lucky I even noticed you talking to me. Caliborn and Hagrid said that the Grindy Lows are in the Black Lake and have been acting more aggressive than usual. Apparently, even the Merc people have been having trouble with them lately. Hmm. That is odd. Grindy Lows are usually aggressive, but Merc people can typically tame them. I wonder if any other professors are keeping interesting secrets. Perhaps I should keep eavesdropping. If you're looking for more of a challenge, then I might suggest making Professor Binge your next target. Professor Binge is more of a challenge? Hmm. Yeah, you know, he's a ghost, and ghosts are sort of invisible themselves, so... Hmm. Sorry, it made more sense in my head. Actually, Liz, that might be a good idea. I think I will practice using my invisibility cloak on Binge next. After all, who knows what secrets a ghost might have? I mean, I would assume that he can see me. Can he? That's an interesting question, actually. So much for Bins being a challenge. Ghost or not, eavesdropping on a sleeping professor isn't going to prepare me to sneak into the ministry at all. Cuthbert, are you in? But spying on him and Madame Pins just might. I better put on my invisibility cloak before Pins enters. Cuthbert? I can hear noises in there. There's me again. Cuthbert, wake up! Ha <laughs> Eh, what? I'm awake. <laughs> now where was I? Ah yes, the Soap Blizzard of 1378 ushered in. Ooh. Oh, honestly, Cuthbert, there is no time to be sleeping in your chair. We still have yet to determine whether we should continue our research. <laughs> what research was that again? You know, the research we agreed to do for Rick Pick shortly before she was dismissed. Uh. Of course, that research. You've forgotten again, haven't you? Uh. You might have to refresh my memory. Mm. Patricia Rick Pick must have been interested in the history of the Mer people for a reason. Perhaps that is cause enough to continue our research. Ah, uh. uh, fair point. 
She was certainly a woman who would never let herself get distracted. In which case, our work may be able to shed some light on Rake Pick's intentions. Then for now, what do you say we continue our research? Agreed. Then it's settled. Now, I really gotta get back to the library. I fear what those wheezy twins might do if they realize I'm away from my post. May I escort you back? I suppose. I'll have to thank Liz for the suggestions to come here. I never would have guessed Bins and Pint of all people would have information on Raypack. And considering Aberforth spotted her in the Hogshead Inn not too long ago, perhaps it's time to test out my invisibility cloak on something other than the professors. Who, what, when, where, how, why? Well, we know the why. Mm hmm. Oh! I think he sees me. There you are, Casey. Mad I, but I was invisible. How did you know I was there? Mm hmm. A cheap invisibility cloak may be enough to fool untrained eyes, but it won't work on me or the ministry. You're lucky I found out about your little plan when I did. Mm hmm. Now is not the time to be playing around with an invisibility cloak. We need to get to the training grounds. Trouble is coming, Casey, and I need to make sure you're prepared to fight for your life. Okay. So that's how that ends. I went to the Hogshead Inn and I was listening to the different strangers and everything, because I wanted to hear what they were singing, and then this guy popped up again. Things have taken a very interesting turn indeed, so we'll see where this is gonna lie. What really frustrates me in all this though is that if the invisibility cloak is now useless and we're not going to use it anymore, what was the point of going through all that stuff over the last bunch of chapters just to get this thing if we're not going to use it? I hope we're going to use it to some degree. It seems pretty clear we're not going to be using it for intended purpose anymore. Just a guess. I guess we'll see though. Moving forward in Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery. So thank you everybody so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.